And it's time for What's Hot, where we talk about the stories that have everybody talking. And we're joined by Eric Paulson from Biz Starts Milwaukee, plus Jeff Wagner is back. Well, Mitt Romney may be winning ugly, but he's still winning. After Super Tuesday, Mitt Romney has three times as many delegates as Rick Santorum or Newt Gingrich. If he gets the nomination, will he be able to beat President Obama? I think the jury's still out on this. I mean, here's the reality. It is very, very difficult to beat a sitting president. It's only happened twice in my lifetime. You know, once when President Reagan beat Jimmy Carter and then when President Clinton beat uh, George Bush. So it's very, very difficult. And I have to say that, you know, the odds on favor to be reelected is President Obama. However, there's lots of variables out there, including the economy. If gas prices hit $5 a gallon, if the economy takes a sudden unexpected turn, you know, then I think everything's on the table. But I think it's an uphill battle. This has been an inter interesting primary for the Republicans. It reminds me of the Democrats in 04 when they shrugged their shoulders and said, okay, we'll run John Kerry. I think that's what's going to happen this year for the Republicans. All right, fine. Mitt Romney will be the candidate. And if the election were held today, which is a question everybody's going to be hearing over the next few months, I think if the election were held today between Romney and Obama, Obama would win re-election right now. Eric, do you understand? I, I got to tell you, I don't understand why mainstream Republicans are, are so standoffish towards Mitt Romney. I mean, it just, uh, you know, now he, he's, uh, he's going to win the nomination. It's all about organization. You know, he's essentially been running for four or five years. Mm -hmm. but, but nevertheless, you know, he hasn't sealed the deal. And well, I guess I don't get it. I don't think he's somebody that everybody's very enthused about. He's like the most centrist candidate, the most likely to beat Obama in their minds. And the Republicans are divided about fiscal versus social conservatism. Yeah. And, and I, I, I had a good look at some numbers the New York Times put out this morning. It is the evangelical vote that will right. sink Mitt Romney if if anything does. I mean, right. he's carrying every other demographic right. group right yep. now except the evangelical vote. And we've seen in the past two Republican presidential elections how important that vote is. And I think he has a trouble relating to the common man. I mean, a lot of the things that have come out of his mouth really emphasize the fact that he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and maybe not quite as in touch with, you know, a lot of blue collar voters, the likes of which that he's going to encounter come April when uh, we have our primary. But even there, Wisconsin. according to these numbers, he's not he, as bad as you'd think. Yeah, he really doesn't know how to filter his comments for that kind of stuff. Yeah. He doesn't. Yeah. All right. Be interesting. All right. Well, our next topic coming up. Milwaukee and Jeff Wagner from News Radio 620 WTMJ. Well, a poor economy has been spending more men, sending more men rather to the unemployment line. It means more wives are bringing home the bacon these days. And experts say it's not necessarily because women are getting ahead, but because the recession is affecting men more strongly. Now, how is this affecting how Americans view the traditional roles of men and women? Well, I, for one, have no problem being a kept man. I just want that to be covered. <laughs> I mean, I, it's actually something that I have always aspired to. So, I mean, I've, I've got no issue. If, if my wife is able to make more money than I can, that, that's absolutely fine. You know, actually, and, and what you're seeing here is this recession has had a disproportionate impact on men and particularly older men, you know, hitting guys in their 40s and their 50s, the mid to upper level managers whose jobs have gone away. Um, that, that's just, you know, one of the realities. I'm sure people are having to deal with it. But again, if you're a kept guy, go for it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that either, Jeff. If I can find me a woman who makes a ton of money, I'm okay with that. Yeah. What, what, what's that kids, email address there, clean, Eric? Yeah. You know, all that good stuff, not a problem. But this is actually a trend that's been going on for three or four decades now. It just got reiterated a little bit more with the recent recession. But yeah, I mean, the jobs that are being lost are the ones traditionally that men dominated in. And the jobs that are on the upswing are traditionally jobs that a lot of women have played the role in. So they're just playing a stronger role in the economy in general now, and that includes in the family. Yeah, I know we laugh about this a little bit, but a, a wise man, when the economy reset itself a couple of years ago, said this is going to be one of the legacies of this reset of the economy, that more and more households, the woman would be the breadwinner in the future because the men, for the longest time, had the highest paying jobs. So when it comes time to cut headcount, right. who's going to lose mm -hmm. their job? The high paying man is going to lose the job, and the women are going to slowly work their way up as the breadwinners in society. And I got to say, Say, you know, speaking as a woman, I think that a lot of working women sometimes have mixed emotions about being out in the workforce, especially when you have children, because there are days when you're like, oh, I don't mm -hmm. want to go out there. I just want to be at home with my kids, go on the field trips, go to the soccer practices. Mm -hmm. So you may like your job, but you're tugged yeah. to, you know, what's holding you at home. So sometimes you have an identity crisis and it kind of goes back and forth. Yeah. I, I can only right. speak for myself, but I know a lot of women mm -hmm. who struggle with, you know, being a 
trying well, to do both. And, and quickly, Shelley, I think that's going to be one of the interesting legacies is a, as more and more women become, say, the, the principal earners, um, you know, how is that going to affect the traditional roles of, of child caring, you know, for guys? Are they going to yeah. accept more and more of that responsibility? And, it, and that's what I think is going to be interesting to look at 10, 15 years from now. Well, my husband has already <laughs> told me no way. He said like, his, his ego couldn't take it. Like, there's no way. So. Our egos are taking a bigger hitting than anything. <laughs> All right, talk, think. Talk, let's talk about our collective ego here for a minute. <laughs> Forbes yeah. magazine has ranked Milwaukee in the top <clears throat> 10 comeback cities. The magazine notes that many fewer people are leaving Bruce City compared to uh, what was happening here in 2005, and more people are moving in. However, there are still more losses than gains. Uh, what do you guys think? Is Milwaukee, you know, for in, uh, by our own standards, <laughs> making a that, comeback. That's a depressing definition of a comeback, by the way. Fewer <laughs> people are really? leaving. It's not as bad yeah. as it used it's to not, be. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I th look, yeah, I, I agree with that. That's a weird way to look at it. I, I mean, I'm a cheerleader for this city. I really am. I think there's a lot of stuff going on. I think there's a lot of great things going on, and I think there's a lot of opportunities. And so I, I don't know about comeback. I'm not sure Milwaukee's ever really been gone when you talk about the things you can do. It was down for a while, but there's a lot of great things happening in the city. I mean, the economy's stabilizing a little bit. It's diversifying. There's a lot of economic initiatives going on. I see it at Biz Starts with startups. There's a lot of activity happening, and a lot more people are optimistic about the city's future. The quality of life here is still very high, and I think Milwaukee was, was kind of on the way down for a while. It's definitely turning around and on the way up. Full-fledged comeback, not yet, but I think it's on the way. Yeah, and it depends where you are in this city, too. I think that right. there's two mm -hmm. Milwaukee's. You know, there's one Milwaukee on the outskirts in the suburbs. Right. Drive through the city of Milwaukee. It's a completely different story. Well, downtown's right. doing great, and so are a lot of neighborhoods, though. Yeah, I would talk good when, I guess when I hear that, over. I think region as opposed to the city, per se. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, yeah. yeah. All right, guys, thanks so much for taking a quick break.